Final question, final question for you. You've said that you want the deal with AJ to be done by the end of Monday. Monday? Monday? Monday is the deadline. What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Tyson the Gypsy King Fury. This is his first time making a statement since he has signed his contract, and this is what the WBC heavyweight champion had to say. Quote, listen, I'm not too bothered about Usyk at the moment because I've got Big Francis to deal with. After that's dealt with, and I get out of there injury-free, in one piece, we're on like Donkey Kong. I'll deal with this little guy. I'll swat him off like a little piece of rain off my shoulder. But until that day, I will always give every single person I fight 100%. I'll have been training by the time the fight comes around for 12 weeks. I only usually train for four or five weeks, but I've been out for a year. I've lost like 150 pounds in four weeks just by dieting. I'll see you out there. Those are the words of Tyson the Gypsy King Fury. And let me counterpunch. Uh, okay, classic Fury stuff. Uh, one thing alarms me, though. The first paragraph. You know, um... If I come out injury free, if I come out in one piece, you know, I don't like him saying that because it sounds to me like it's just too redundant. If you guys can remember when Tyson Fury uh, beat Derek Jasor in December of last year, 10 months ago, and that was the last time he was in the ring, okay? And he said some of the same jargon. You remember when Big Joe Joyce was up there along with Usyk and they were kind of sitting there side by side in the corner and Tyson Fury was going, I end you, you ugly little man, you bitch. I will end you. And then after that, he was like, Big Joe, if this fight doesn't happen for whatever reason, how about we take it in Wembley? And Joe was all, you know, yeah, yeah, right? And, you know, and it made me think like, okay, well, why would you even give an option you know what I mean? Like, why would you select? Why why would you have an alternative? Why would you create one? Why would you speak that into existence? Like, what's with all that? You know what I mean? Why would you throw Big Joe in there and get him all distracted? That might have that might have been why he got beat by Zane because he was thinking, let me let you know. I hope that Usyk fight don't happen so I can get Tyson Fury right. So you know. I don't like the alternatives. I don't like the options. I don't like him saying if this happens or that happens, because normally when you say what, if something don't happen, that's normally what does happen. It's like Murphy's law. You know, what will go wrong or what can go wrong will go wrong. Okay, so that's one of those things, I think. You know, and... And people and people are still, you know, not certain. Uh, they're still skeptical. They are. That Tyson Fury won't fight Usyk. And then him saying stuff like that. Yeah, I'll knock him off my shoulder like rain and this, that, and the other. The little man, I'll deal with him. But I'm going to give this guy 100%. That's if. That's if this don't happen. And if that don't happen. You know, I, I don't like that if shit. Because the if could always be an excuse on why you're not taking the fight. And a lot of people think that Tyson Fury is only uh, stating that he signed this fight simply to sell the fight that nobody wants to see him fight, which is Francis Ngono. You know what I mean? Because I always believe this. If you really believed wholeheartedly that you and Francis would create all that money by itself, you wouldn't have even brought up the Usyk signing. Why would you bring that up? You would bring that up right after the fight's over with Francis. That's how you give a fighter 100%. That's how you show a fighter respect. Not the thing that you're doing. You're using Usyk or a possibility of you fighting Usyk as a way to sell them damn tickets that people may or may not want to see. See, this is not a Mayweather-McGregor. 
okay? Floyd Mayweather retired in 2015, okay? 2015, he beat Andre Berto, and he retired 49-0 in the sport from the sport of boxing. Then you had 2016, retired. Then you had 2017, he fought Conor McGregor, coming back and uh, shocking the world with crazy numbers because Conor McGregor was taking over and he was received to be the next Floyd Mayweather but in the UFC world so yeah Floyd took advantage of it you didn't do that by far you didn't let anybody come in to make their name known you know what I mean or or have a uh, parody of you you know because it look that fight is not going to be what people think it's going to be and I'm not hating on the fight it's just not a Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather fight that fight was that reason it was because you had the bad boy of the UFC that talked a lot of shit, stayed in trouble, you know what I mean, like Floyd Mayweather. Some people loved him, some people hated him, just like Floyd Mayweather, you know what I mean? So the comparisons were side by side. It was just UFC over here and boxing over there. And then, you know, then they came together and made this fight in the boxing circle. OK, that squared circle, they got it on and it was a spectacle. It was a pretty good fight, you know, but the buildup was massive. There's nothing like that in this fight. There's nothing like that with pushing and shoving and calling each other bitches and hoes. And you know what I mean? Just like M McGregor was telling, you know, uh, Floyd and, and he was sa he was saying something about somebody else. And you know what I mean? It, it was a huge, massive event. OK. This ain't that. <laughs> so I think of anything, honestly, I think Tyson Fury needed to throw something in there to appetize people for to get us all to watch this fight, to let them know that he's still a boxer, to let them know that, hey, he's still around, to let them know he's still relevant. You know, so, hey, you know, it's like a two for one special. You watch this fight. Because people are either are going to watch to see what he does, what type of performance he has with a guy that fights nothing like Usyk, but that's what people do. They look at the last fight you were in, regardless of the style, and make a decision on how good those fighters are, depending on who's in the ring. Okay, that's what happens. So, no, I don't really necessarily like the if this and if that type of stuff, because it, it makes me suspicious as well, because, you know, he said that before, and we if, if you've heard someone allude to certain wordings, okay, that may be a problem. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Tyson the Gypsy King Fury making his first statement about Alexander Usyk. Of course, please subscribe, and you guys been counterpunching. Peace!